Hey everybody, my name is Rick and I've been part of the Critical Security Controls version 8 editorial panel and worked on previous control panels for years. This is the 15th in my video series doing a deep dive into the updates into the, each of the new controls. I have links to my videos to controls 1 through 14 in the description as well as a link to the CIS security control page to down the own copy to follow along at home. Today we're talking about a new control, number 15, Service Provider Management. Service Provider Management is brand new for version 8. It's not just a new control made up of multiple retired controls. It's has none of the controls that existed before. This was added because the reliance on cloud platforms, managed service platforms, vendors and partners that make up the modern infrastructure of organizations today make this a need. <laughs> um, you'll see it's pretty basic because it's a debut and we didn't want to get too crazy, right? Uh, I'm sure through feedback we'll refine this over time. So let's look at the safeguards. We'll post the safeguards over here. Um, there are seven safeguards for Control 15. 15.1, uh, establish and maintain an inventory of service providers. Like asset management, it's the first one. It's also the only implementation group one safeguard. 15.2, Establish and maintain a service provider management policy. Like many of the other controls, we want a process defined. In 15.3, we classify service providers. This would be based on risk or things such as the amount or type of data stored or the criticality of the business process that it supports. In 15.4, ensure service provider contracts include security requirements, it's important to include things like non-disclosure agreements, minimum security requirements, and breach notification processes. In 15.5, assess service providers. This is the last, the, this and the last two are implementation group three controls. This is to perform some assessment on the service provider based on the policy defined in 15.2. And 15.6, monitor service providers, where an assessment's a snapshot. There are platforms and services that do more regular or continuous monitoring that are available. 15.7, securely decommission service providers. This will include removing any account access or having them return or destroy the data that they hold for you. So let me put that down and let's look at a deeper dive into the seven safeguards. Um, 15.1, establish, maintain an inventory of service providers. Here, we talk about contact information and rating the provider based on risk classification. We state to review this list annually. 15.2, establish, maintain a service provider management policy. We indicate to define risk classification, assessment, monitoring, and decommissioning procedures and review these providers at least annually. In 15.3, classify service providers. We suggest setting classification based on data sensitivity, volume, availability requirements, SLAs, applicable regulations, or inherent risk. We suggest reviewing this yearly. And 15.4, ensure service provider contracts include security requirements. We list incident response or breach notification, response procedures, data encryption and access requirements, and data disposal commitments. We suggest reviewing service provider contracts annually. 15.5, assess service providers. We say this may vary based on the classification, might include certification reports like a SOC 2, ISO, PCI, or some custom questionnaire. There also might be a condition where you do a manual review. I did a lot of these over the years. I mean, I did them for service providers that were call centers, data centers, print shops, back when we used to mail bills out for uh, banks or, or other kind of utilities or monthly statement. And the idea is to, you know, follow the flow of data, you know, which systems hold it, who has accessing it, you know, how are they protecting it? And do they have a monsieur program? My favorite story in this was like over 15 years ago, there was a very well-known um, magazine that was having a contest and people would enter their information into this contest and they had this third party that was managing this process and holding all of the data. And so I had sent one of my friends, Chris, up to Boston to look at this provider ended up being a total sketchy organization. I mean, on paper, they look good. They've done this for many other organizations, but he went there and it was in like a sketchy part of town. And I hopefully I have this picture here of the data center, which is really just a bunch of systems on the floor. And that was like a big wake up call. So, you know, sometimes if you have an inkling or it's a really, really important thing, send a person out there to actually take a look because you might be curious what you find. And finally, of course, we say review this annually, this process or whenever a contract gets updated or renewed. 
15.6, monitor service providers. This could be passive or active, leveraging third-party applications that monitor vulnerabilities on the provider's environment. 15.7, securely decommissioned service providers. This would include removing user or service accounts, terminating data flows, or secure data disposal. I would hope that this is fundamental to all implementation group organizations. Um, we, hit, we, we have it in implementation group three right now because it might not be manageable to a small organization or it might not have, a small organization may not have a leverage to tell a large cloud prover, provider it's like, prove to me that you deleted all my data. Anyway, so uh, now let's look at the upfront material or narrative as we refer to it. I'll put this up on this side. Um, so this is completely new. Uh, and so in the overview, we talk about developing a process to evaluate service providers who hold sensitive data or are responsible for an organization's critical IT platforms or process to ensure these providers are protecting these platforms and data appropriately. While third-party risk management is usually about protecting data, there is also critical business applications or process that might be hosted, which can significantly impact a business if it's no longer available. In the why this control is critical, we start by highlighting that many organizations rely on third-party infrastructures, platforms, and software as a core business function. And we talk about there has been numerous third-party breaches that have impacted organizations, noting several retail credit card breaches in the late 2000s and the more recent rise in ransomware attacks against smaller service providers. We highlight that most security and privacy regulations require data protection extend to third parties such as HIPAA, FFIC, and the UK Cyber Essentials. And we discuss while having performed third party assessments for decades, there has never been a standard assessment used that is recognized by all or even within an industry. And service providers are often being assessed multiple times a month by their customers, asking different questions, using different standards of measurement, different questionnaires, and sometimes I've even been, been in one of those third-party assessments where they said someone came in, they had all their ducks in a row, showed them all their details, and they say, okay, well, I'm supposed to be here three days, so let me go dig for more things. Not really convenient. We mentioned that cyber insurance companies have their own individual checklist for requirements and adding to the volume of the assessments that service providers are getting now on a regular basis. We close by examining that while large provider cloud providers might be hosting more critical business functions such as email or data storage, that these large companies really aren't that big of a risk to these smaller firms who probably would have done it less securely if they tried to do it themselves. But there are some service providers who might use fourth or fifth parties, which might not be reviewed at all and need to be considered into the scope. We'll put that down and switch to page two. We start in procedures and tools at the fact that most organizations have used standard checklists such as from ISO 27001 or 2, NIST Cybersecurity Framework, NIST 853 or 8171, or even the CIS critical security controls themselves and how this process is often managed through spreadsheets. But there are online platforms that allow for central management of this process. We emphasize that the purpose of this control is not to add a new checklist to your list, but we're trying to look at it as a overall fundamentals of a complete program and how to leverage it and manage it. We state that organizations in every size should have a policy about reviewing service providers, including an inventory of vendors, risk rating associated with their potential business impact. We also highlight that there should be contract language to hold these vendors accountable in case of material incident. We talk about there are a number of third-party shared assessment platforms that already have an inventory of thousands of service providers and perform ongoing assessments and have ratings of service providers and infrastructure using passive technical assessment techniques. And while performing reviews, it's important to focus on the platform and services that the provider is supporting your specific business process, not necessarily the entire organization though some have that in their contract. We indicate that some traditional steps to reduce risk are if the service provider uses an MSSP or has a retainer and in incident response firm or holds cybersecurity insurance. And these are sometimes requirements by large organizations for their service providers. We close by highlighting that like accounts, it's important to decommission service providers when their contract is complete, which includes deactivating accounts, terminating data flows, and securely return or disposal of the data. And, and for that last point, we reference NIST 800-88 on guidance for media sanitation as a reference in that point. So 
that wraps up control 15. Hopefully this was helpful to understand this brand new control. If you haven't already, please go download the controls yourself from uh, cissecurity.org and be able to follow along. And if you have any questions or comments, sign up to Controls Workbench. There's a link in the description for both of those where you can post questions and perhaps contribute to the next version. And as always, uh, feel free to leave me a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great day. Hey everybody, I have no pets to share, but interesting art pieces. This little pumpkin head guy for the Spirit of Fall seems to be sitting on either a trophy or maybe an urn, but he's cute. Have a great day.